Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, our worst fears have come true. And everybody's going to say, oh, it's because she's a woman. And, yo, it's not, it has, it has, again, has nothing to do with that. I grew up knowing of knowing Brad. When the rumor started up about a female silver, silver surfer, they referenced that, this is everyone who started picking up on this rumor, that there was a, a female version of the Silver Surfer, not necessarily a Norman Rad Silver Surfer, but a uh, Shala Bao, which is uh, um, Norman Rad's love interest in his story. And that's all I know. Which, Brian, it tells me this, that she wasn't her character or that character wasn't as popular that people couldn't or oh, I didn't know of her, right? It just started coming up that she that she was a Silver Surfer at, at one point. I don't know the backstory. Nobody's really done anything other than what we're hearing now that may come um, to fruition. Brian, what were your thoughts when when you heard? I was certainly disappointed. If you, if you follow me on Instagram, I put out something about the disappointment I felt about this selection. And again, it has nothing to do with her. It has everything to do with, one, me knowing of Norn Rad and most Silver Surfer fans knowing of Norn Rad and his story. And second, Brian, let's say this comes off, this comes off well. Let's say they are able to change the minds of the naysayers. Let's say they are able to do that. What then of Norn Rad then? What sort of excitement do we get from his introduction when he's finally introduced? You know what I'm saying? Is is it the level of excitement or awe is already diminished because we've already seen a certain rendition of the Silver Surfer already and what he does may not be as spectacular of what we know the capabilities of the Silver Surfer are. I'm disappointed, Brian. Most people are disappointed if you go out there and ask people. They're disappointed. What are your thoughts? Let's, let's go into why. That's always the important thing. So Julia Garner. Again, none of this is a commentary on Julia Garner. Julia Garner is a three-time Emmy winner uh, for her work on Ozark, most notably. That's where most people would know her from. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. This has to do with a multi-layered mistake, in my, in my opinion. So if Julia Garner, Shalabal, is going to actually be the Silver Surfer, I think they are going to have to co-opt Norrin Rad's story into her story which means they're going to take two characters, make them one, and Norrin Rad will never see the light of day in this Marvel iteration, unless there's some multiversal version that you get later, which we won't care about. That's my prediction. So I want to make that distinction clear. There have been female heralds of Galactus in the comics. To my knowledge, none of them has actually been a silver surfer, right? Norrin Rad was both that forced Herald of Galactus and the Silver Surfer. Those are two different roles. So Marvel would seem to be changing the comics canon in order to accommodate their female surfer in this case, because she is being called the Silver Surfer. She's not being called Shallow Bell. Um, so that to me is disappointing for several reasons, because I think it reinforces what I've always thought was a risky and somewhat poor decision to introduce Galactus and all of this in the first place in this movie. Because what it looks like, we don't know the full cast around, but we've got a Fantastic Four where there's three male members and one female. You've got Galactus himself, who is going to be, you know, a male character. We don't know all the other supporting characters, but doesn't this kind of have the feel of we feel like we're a woman short, so we got to figure out another lead and make it female somehow. And you kind of go down the list. And you're like, well, it can't be Galactus and it can't be Reed and it can't be Ben and it can't be Johnny. So it has to be the surfer to which I say, if that's the case, I reiterate, I don't think Galactus or surfer should be in this movie. I think this movie should have been built on other stories and other premises if you're already in a corner where you feel like we have to change the gender of one of these characters just to serve as that rather than tell a great story. 
So that's why I think there's a little bit of a domino effect here of some bad storytelling that is leading to what I think will be a real outcry. Uh, you mentioned there's general disappointment. I think it's going to go a lot further than that, given what we've seen about reactions to Disney recently. And this is obviously a, a very well-known and beloved character that is being changed in a way that people are going to say, aha, there's Disney being Disney again in the wrong ways, the ways that Bob Iger doesn't want us to look at. And unfortunately, that's going to be not Julia Garner's fault, but she's, she might have to wear some of that opposition as she goes through this. And I certainly hope she delivers a good performance and a good part because we want a good movie. But yes, I'm disappointed. And my belief is we will not see Norrin Rad at any point in this universe. Let us know in the comment section below if you guys know of Shia LaBelle in the comic books being the Silver Surfer because I have been uh, listening to some of the commentary from, you know, the same old suspects, Emergency Awesome, uh, and others, John Campia, saying that there has been a version of of Shalabao as a Silver Surfer, but this is supposed to be in this MCU, uh, uh, you know, from the the universe of the Fantastic Four in the 1960s f from where they come from. And all I ask myself is what was so, what couldn't be created from Nora Rad's story that was, or oh, that you believe couldn't have worked? Like what do, we will have to see, unfortunately, and wait for that answer when we see this movie. Oh, okay, this made sense, this was dope, whatever. If they're able to do it, which I don't know, Brian, if they will be able to convert those who already said, I'm out. You ask yourself, or I ask myself, what happened or what did they find out from the disaster of... I'm sure they know that the Marvel, Captain Marvel movie was just riding the wave. She-Hulk. The disaster that was if all you're relying on is the presence of galactus you've already lost i agree, I agree. yo we were, we're getting godzilla king kong we're getting all these visual stuff how different of course galactus seeing galactus is gonna be oh snap galactus but there's more than galactus than just his presence it's more of his thinking and his relationships that he has with unlikely people like reed richards the affection he has for silver surfer are they gonna be able to replicate that with this silver surfer that they're gonna give us if so what a shame Nora Rad doesn't have that or his story. Because if you, again, if you watched, Brian, I don't know if you've watched it. And if you haven't, Brian, I'm going to ask you again to go see it. First episode of The oh, Silver I Surfer. I watched it. I watched it after you told Oh, me. you watched it with me, right? I showed you that clip, yeah, right? Yeah, and then I went back and watched the whole um, sequence. of episode. three episodes, right? I think it's like yeah, three yeah, episodes yeah, of that yeah, arc. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what I want to see, Brian. That's what I want to see. And, 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 and yet they... I don't know, Brian, where is the disconnect? Well, how do you arrive? Obviously, you arrive at this because some some dude pitched an idea that nobody can say no to, I guess. What are your thoughts? Well, how, how, how do we get here? There were a lot of rumors that Anya Taylor-Joy was offered the part like last year. And so I think this casting lends credence to the idea that that dialogue occurred because it suggests that they wanted a female ca character in this role from the very beginning or at least from the very beginning of the Matt Shackman version of Fantastic Four, whatever that story wound up being. As I said, it, it, it just has the feel of a numbers game to me versus like, hey, we want to tell the best possible story and this is how we get there. Now, maybe they'll make a case that somehow that this is the best possible story. I'll be a little skeptical of that given what we know from the comics. That's again, it's not a, it's not a gender broad commentary, it's just where this storyline tends to come from in the comics and what people have responded to most it's yeah it's the Norrin Rad storyline um both in in pages and in, in animated form so it just says to me like this is something that they wanted and look I mean we know this I mean if we're getting into the Victoria Alonso discussion I mean yes was she a very vocal proponent of certain things of course are we supposed to believe that she's the only voice that had that no, come on, man. She was she was also the fall person for 
some other things from visual effects to yes, criticism of the messaging, but like, there's a lot of people inside that company, I'm sure who, who share that vision and share that view, which is why that whole Iger um, tact, which he doubled down on this week about entertainment over messaging to me has is so fascinating because I just, I feel like he's rowing against his own workforce in a lot of ways. Um, and so I, you know, I, what my point about Disney though has been, and we see this a little bit, you know, that reaction to X-Men 97 and Gambit's t-shirt and people trying to latch onto that as some like overt messaging Disney's trying to stick in the cartoon. And it's like, he's wearing a nineties cut. I mean, he's wearing a nineties cutoff t-shirt and he's Gambit. Like, I don't really think, and Gambit yeah, acts like Gambit the, in the show. Like, yeah. I don't, I didn't look at people, that scene. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a limit of people over, they're reaching. But that shows to me the microscope, right? People have the microscope on everything. Everything. Oh, snap. I thought it was Nick Fury's little brother. <laughs> I just like you. I, I just like you, Pablo. Very much. <laughs> What's good, man? First of all, Brian, how you doing, man? What's going on, man? What's going on? Good to see you. So here's <laughs> Freddie, everybody. Freddie from Brooklyn. So we're basically discussing uh, this this Silver Surfer uh, uh, situation. Um, Brian, finish your thought, and I'll ask Freddie, and then uh, we'll move on to the Disney proxy thing, because I'm pretty sure Freddie's going to give us exactly what we feel about it. But finish your thought, Brian, before I go to Freddie. My, no, my, what I was saying uh, was just the microscope that Disney's on from a messaging standpoint, that people are hyper reactive to something as to me, innocent as Gambit's t-shirt X-Men 97 shows me that this casting and this choice is going to draw a lot of fire. And I'm not saying that's that just because something's controversial is a reason not to do it, but I am suggesting that this will be an issue for this film and this film had its share of issues already just because Fantastic Four has failed twice before. And so to me, this seems to put this more in the category of a risk um, by, by going in this direction. And obviously the consensus reaction seems to have been, seems to have been more negative than not. Freddie, I'm sure you are not for the choice that Marvel has taken in ter in terms of delivering to us a Silver Surfer story. Um, they must have something in store. Uh, but your thoughts on this choice? I am disappointed. Um, I am surprised. When I talked to Tracy um, about it earlier today, I thought he was kidding. And, you know, I don't know why they're going in this direction. I mean, <laughs> with the failure of all the things they was doing, so-called the woke movement and stuff like that. I, I, I mean, are they trying to get the, um, the female attention or try to get the, uh, the, 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 the young women or older women? I don't know. Cause you um, said earlier, scene. cause you said earlier, the women scene. don't care about the superhero but genre they, that much. They, and they don't. And that's proven by, you know, the Marvel. Captain Marvel. Yes. Yeah, so Wonder Captain Woman, Marvel, 84. Wonder Woman, 84. We had a discussion about female led, how, how tough it's been, right? How many bad, bad movies there have been. So there are remnants of right. people trying to push this idea for some reason that it's necessary or else we're, we're going to look bad. My friend, you already look bad with this announcement. But yes. my, this is my point is like, I think again, making this choice to me, there's a, there's a sense of, obligation, right? We have to have a certain amount of female characters near the top of the marquee, right? We, right now we have Vanessa Kirby. That's awesome. And something like this says to me, we, we really want a second female lead somewhere in this movie. And my counter to that is great. Then don't put Galactus and Silver Surfer in this movie. Find another story where a female lead makes sense and save Norrin Rad for the sequel or another time. That's what bothers me is like, we're, like I said, it looks to me like they're gonna combine two characters and get rid of a classic character in the process. You know what I think perhaps Brian, this is, this is something that may have crossed their minds is that we cannot have another repeat of the Avengers. Meaning 
You have all these guys and only a black widow. All these stars and only one female lead. All these white guys too. Mm. I mean, Nick Fury, right? But like he, he's the overseer. Right. But in that shot where they're panning around, the six of them, they all the same color, right? Except Hulk, he's green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Mark. Okay, Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freddie, what would you have preferred to see instead of Galactus? Because obviously, Galactus, the, the thought of Galactus and seeing the awesomeness of Galactus and who Galactus is and, and if they're able to, wait, 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 wait. And, they, and if they're able to pour, um, represent Galactus the proper way, cause just remember this eternity was turned into a freaking genie. Eternity was turned into a wishing well. Are they going to have Galactus just stomping around like, 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 like Godzilla? You know what I'm what saying? Did I say, Are they gonna do that sort of stuff? I want to see it done right, Pablo. No, no, I want to see it done. Right. I, I don't, I, but I, I, I want to see it done right. I, I just don't want to do a redo. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't want to do a the, redo. Oh, I, I, I get you. We want to see another line of bad Fantastic Four movies. No, not even just the, was, just the rise of the Phil's, the Silver Surfer. I don't want to see that again because we already oh. we already know the gist of that story and how. What Silver Surfer doesn't want to do when he finally realizes Galactus is 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 bugging, or whatever, right? He, he, yeah. yeah, we're gonna see that yet again, right? Perhaps told in a much more comic book accurate way. And when I say that, Silver Surfer's speech and his epiphanies are very enlightening and very dramatic and are they able to pull that off without it being corny or goofy you know what i'm saying there's a lot to be done with this character and i think they're being lazy and giving us somebody new that's not going to represent the silver surfer that we know what would you would you have preferred to see other than galactus and the silver surfer what other because just brian mentioned that he would have preferred seeing another storyline that wasn't this and just save that for build that up. What have happened to building stuff up anymore? We we built up all the way to like end game, yo. A Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom, certainly. Doctor Doom, but do, certainly done in a specific way. I don't just want to see just Doctor Doom. Oh, because we already, you know what I'm saying? We already see that the only way. That... So, I'll, I'll throw a couple of. So, there's a couple of things here too. They they really wanted this to be a space based movie. Right. We know that that was a, a key premise for them. I think that's risky in and of itself. This is where the Marvel CGI problem comes into play, right? They, these these space-based cosmic adventures have not been looking so good uh, in the last few years. And people have, come, have already given them a lot of heat for like, that. Marvels, I would say Ant-Man, Quantumania, right? These, uh, uh, Ant-Man, Quantumania was the, as a different situation because I, I did like what they did with Guardians. Different people, though. Right, that's the gun, the gun visual aesthetic and his effects artist, right? So you immediately got a different result. But I think in general, like the MCU machine, the newer stuff, space-based stuff has kind of been not received all that well, uh, except maybe I guess Loki would be the only thing that would, I guess, qualify for that. Had they remained, I mean, here's a thing, had they remained earthbound, there was an opportunity to build off of Namor if they wanted. Right, we'd already known that character. That would have saved you a lot of exposition and a lot of intro. And he obviously was very good in Wakanda Forever. And he has that intrigue with Sue Storm. So you could have gone that route and and built on Wakanda Forever. But but what the guy issues right now? I get fair, true enough. Yeah, there's not. Yeah, that's fair enough. We got the, the little the Jonathan the Jonathan Majors fan club. <laughs> but um, I just think because to me, like, I just want to be focused on the family. This is my biggest concern. Mm. If this movie is exactly. two hours and 10 exactly. minutes, I got to buy that this is the first family. And how am I going to yes. do that if, if I the have world to put state. in something as complex <laughs> yeah. as Galactus' relationship with the Silver Surfer in the same film? I, I'm very skeptical. There's too many storylines going on that I'm just much more are competing for our interest. There's two movies in here, in my opinion. And I think, like, to celebrate... You know, because we're we're recording this on the tenth anniversary of Captain America: Winter Soldier hitting the, the best theater. movie ever made. Yes, best Marvel movie that we ever had. And I think one of the things that makes that one of many things that makes that movie great is you buy the emotional stakes between 
Steve and Bucky because of the stuff they did in Captain America First Avenger. It's done. You already knew it. So the second the mask comes off and you realize he's actually out, I mean, obviously comic fans knew, but yeah, like, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. casual fan, realizing he's fighting his childhood friend, that pays off all of those scenes. The, the reason why you that worked. To, you don't have to shoot those as flashback. Yeah. The reason why that worked is all based off Chris Evans' performance. That's what you were waiting for that reaction and he gave it he delivered that reaction or that what you were expecting to see he 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 sold it but imagine if you had to put all those scenes from brooklyn and some of the scenes from first avenger where they're fighting side by side and you had to shoehorn those into winter soldier for like 15 to 20 minutes of backstory that it slows much, the movie that, down the movie's worse that's too much yeah that would have been awful so, oh absolutely yes so that's what i'm worried about here is like we need all sorts of exposition for Surfer, for Galactus, for the first family, if it's not going to be an origin story, which it kind of doesn't sound like it is. Like, there's a lot there. That's like a three-hour movie or a four-hour movie. I, I don't I don't know. But I understand the difficulty with Fantastic Four because of the multiple characters that you have to deal with and you have to sell those. You have to, we have to believe the relationship that they're in. You know what I'm saying? They, and they have a, and they have a reputation to, a, you know, to uphold the first family, the famous, we gotta believe all that. They tried to make us do it with the director right, Tim Shaw. Two, two times, yeah, and then the three. third time, you know. Well, the third time, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what that one. Was, so it, yeah. it's my ideal movie would not have even been with the Fantastic. My movie would have been a Silver Surfer movie at in Zen La. The movie ends with the with with. Silver Surfer becoming a Silver Surfer Sur movie? Huh? If there was a, a Silver Surfer if, movie, if there was a Silver Surfer movie, if I if I made it, my movie would start with Zen La. My movie would start and end almost with Zen La, the coming of Galactus, the understanding of Galactus. Why is he here? Who is this person? You do all that stuff. The Watcher coming down, Norman Rad sacrificing, making this final plea. You know what I'm saying? I would have. You could have. You could have made a and movie. Then follow, and then follow. And then follow. And then with um. Yeah. And then follow the up. Aspect, yeah. You can. You can. You can. You can, you, can, Brian you can add like twenty or thirty said. minutes of the the destruction that they lay out for years and years, and the trillions and billions of people that that that, that perish, all because Silver Surfer mm. fought he outsmarted Galactus. That's that's a story right there. But yet they're doing something here. It's just, it's just too, it's just too fast, yo. It's too fast, too much good stuff, and they're just here, just because I don't know, I don't know. All, all of the excitement that 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 the MCU has mattered, because yo, we were watching a freaking soap opera when the Endgame saga. You know what I'm saying? That was a yeah. soap opera, yo. We were watching to see what yeah, was, was next, and then it they was, fell. Uh, in the in the fourth season of Flash, and and it was is over after that. I can't watch anymore because we're getting garbage. We this we we have the thirty minute mark. But I, I'm gonna, we're gonna end this one. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this announcement. Because we have to, what again? I have to, you know what the hell are we doing here, Harry? <laughs> <laughs> Let us know in the comment section. Maybe yeah. we're rooting for Galactus. Yeah, <laughs> man. I... Just wipe it yeah, all out. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, right? Because what they're going to do, they're going to get the ultimate nullify, and then Galactus is going to be like, oh, chill. You know what I'm saying? What's, it gonna, what's the gonna reaction going to be? What's going on here? Right? They have a lot to think about, Brian. Right now, I'm going to say this. If they mess this up, It'll be very hard to redeem themselves. Sure, we'll get our favorite, but the taste of that this this this, this disgustingness will be there forever after that. So far, it's tasting bad. <laughs> it's good. That one will be, will be the final fi final draw for me. Let us know in the comment section below. We'll okay. see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on. Yeah!